Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Misner Media tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at speed ramping inside of DaVinci Resolve. This is something all the kids have been doing recently, so I decided I'd take a look at it, especially since Resolve has some cool features you may not know about. So, in Resolve, we have this shot here, and you know, it is shot in slow motion, which is cool, but let's say we want to make this part fast and then slow back down again here. What we'll do is right click on the clip, go to retime curve, and now we get this excellent little window here, and you see it's set to retime frame right now. That's uh, cool if you have a specific thing you want to do. So the fun thing to do with this is like a fast forward and then reverse effect. So you can go start at this frame, end at this frame, and then in the middle, just adding keyframes along the way, you can say it'll go to you know this frame way at the end and then back. So this is going to look really bad, but you'll see it goes there. Fast forwards, rewinds, and then it's back. So if you want some weird sort of abstract thing, you can do that. But the real meat and potatoes of this is changing retime frame to retime speed right there. So you get this other curve. And now this will let us take this clip and we'll say we'll start our speed ramp here. And I'll just go ahead and add a keyframe. And then we want to end it right there, we'll say, and make it go slow again. And then you can drag this part in the middle and change the speed. So we'll drag it way up. And you see right now it stops at 300%. And if you look at this back, that's not fast enough. We want it to be crazy and glitchy because remember, this is what the kids are doing. So you can drag your control right here way up and you can take it to more like 800%, which once again is a speed that the kids tend to like. You know, we're just doing this for the kids, man. Boom. So just like that, it's very cool. And you can do the same thing the other direction. So say you want it to go there, zoop, and then... Here, let's say we want it to go slow. So you're going to take that way down, something like, you know, 35%. But you see, it gets stuttery. So in order to change that, one of the great things about DaVinci Resolve, which is very cool, is change your retime and scaling. You see in our inspector, whoop, bring that back up, change it to optical flow. And now optical flow used to be very expensive, but now it tends to be all over the place. And what that does, you know, quick science sidebar is it will look at a pixel and then we'll look at the next frame where the pixel is or try to and then determine a vector between those two and then we'll interpolate between those frames. So you can get some pretty cool, uh, smooth slow motion here, but it is hard for your computer to do. So you'll see when we play this back, we get not very good results, but you can see if I render it and put it on the screen, it looks pretty cool and you get some weird artifacting, but you know, that's just something that you learn which shots work well with it and which shots don't. So 2D movement, sort of just moving X and Y without any turning or parallax works really great. It's great for freezing movement, sort of at, I don't know what the correct physics term would be, but the maximum point of potential energy where it's, you know, something's like jumping up and then at the very top of the arc, it sort of stops for a bit. You can just, boom, freeze it up there really well. And there's still that little bit of movement, but that's a really good way to make your, you know, 30 frames per second camera look like a thousand frames per second camera and especially if you look at plugins like twixter that do this really well i know i've done a lot of projects with that and you know whenever i plan out what the shot's gonna look like it ends out looking you know really stinking good and whenever you don't plan it out it ends up looking not so good another thing that you can do with this i'm gonna just go ahead and switch this guy back to what i believe is set to nearest is say you don't want it to be as hard of a transition maybe you want to start fast but you want to ramp down you can just select your keyframe here and change it to a Bezier curve. And then you can drag that out and you see, so now it'll go up to 800% and then sort of ramp its way down, which is pretty nice. So it's a little bit, you know, smoother look. And you can, of course, do that with this guy too. So it's just all nice and cool. So now the shot, you know, looks a lot more youthful. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the Meast Media YouTube channel and ring the little bell because apparently YouTube doesn't notify people anymore unless they ring that little bell on right next to the subscribe button. Also, be sure to go to meastmedia.com slash products where we have lots of cool stuff to make your stuff look better. House LUTs, Carnival Power Grades, Bright Lights, Light Leaks, Lens Junk, etc., etc. Free stuff too. Whoa, ba -ba -ba -bow. fireworks. Once again, I've been Theo with Meast Media. Hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.